concert, if we may, to the time when you offered the tickets to Mr. Damiano before the concert actually took place. Okay. During that point in time when you offered the tickets to him and before he actually went to the concert, did you ever say to him or suggest to him that maybe he should bring some of his songs with him? No, I did not. Any? Do you deny saying that, or is it you just don't recall one way or the other? I deny suggesting to Jim that he bring songs along with him. I I did, however, concur with him when he asked me, "Do you think I should bring my songs with me?" I said, sure, why not? What could it hurt? This is the videotape deposition of Elliot Mintz in the matter of Damiano versus Sony Music and Bob Dylan. Have you ever lied to Mr. Damiano? Yes. Bob Dylan started out singing other people's songs, but as he says, there came a point where I had to write what I wanted to say because what I wanted to say nobody else was writing. Born in Hibbing, Minnesota, a, a town, he says, where you couldn't be a rebel, it was too cold. <laughs> Bob moved to New York at age 19. By the time he was 23, uh, Bob's voice, uh, with its weight, its, its unique gravelly power, was redefining not just what music sounded like, but uh, the message it carried and how it made people feel. Uh, today, everybody from Bruce Springsteen to you 2 uh, owes Bob a debt of gratitude. Uh, there is not a, a bigger giant uh, in the history of uh, American music. Yeah, that stuff. Bob Dylan is sick and tired of his critics. In an interview with Rolling Stone, the 71-year-old folk rock icon, who has just released his 35th studio album, addressed charges of plagiarism, calling his critics wussies and pussies for claiming he was stealing from the works of others. In 2006, the New York Times accused Dylan of borrowing from a Civil War era poet on his Modern Times album. And the Wall Street Journal claimed Dylan's 2001 record Love and Theft had very similar phrasing to a 1995 biography of a Japanese mobster. Dylan claims that in folk and jazz, quotation is a rich and enriching tradition and he compared the accusations to folk fans calling him Judas when he started to play the electric guitar on stage for the first time in the early 1960s. No doubt some will examine Dylan's latest album, Tempest, for its authenticity. But in his latest interview, Dylan has a few choice words for his harshest critics. They can rot in hell. This is the videotape deposition of Elliot Mintz 
in the matter of Damiano versus Sony Music and Bob Dylan. Have you ever lied to Mr. Damiano? Yes. Um, yeah, we started to meet meet these 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 people who'd really just been in newspapers and on film. You know, we actually were rubbing shoulders with them. He was one of them. He was our idol. Bob was, uh, Bob was our hero. Not an idol, but we just heard his record. As I said, we listened to his album, and it really gave us a buzz, and we played it constantly, over and over and over again. I mean, I heard of Bob through John. Uh, he'd played the records to me, and it was just, it was just great. I think it was freewheeling. We love Bob Dylan. Oh, what did he see? My blue-eyed son And what did you see My darling young one Son, newborn baby Was wild wolves all around it So how we've done Not many times, but on those occasions When he would ask me Could I pass on something To Mr. Dillon may have said to him, I'll try and pass it along, a poor words to that effect. Uh, the criticism that you've received for more or less leaving folk music for folk rock uh, hasn't seemed to bother you very much. Do you think you'll stick with folk rock, or are you going it's, on into more writing? Uh, I don't play folk rock. What I would you call play. your music? I would call it... Uh, um, I like to think of it more in terms of vision music. It's uh, mathematical music. <coughs> Would you say that the words were more important than the music? Uh, the words are just as important as the music. There would be no music without the words. Which do you do first, ordinarily? Uh, the words. Do you think there will ever be a time when you will paint or sculpt? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Do you think there will ever be a time when you will be hung as a thief? <laughs> you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> The office of Archer and Hayes, located at 500 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. This is the case of James Demiano versus Sony Music Entertainment. This is the deposition of Mohammed Mahoumi, at this time, Council of Identified Persons. Stephen Kramer for the plaintiff. Warren Snyder and Stephen Hayes for the defendants. At this time, I'll have the court reporters swear in the witness. Would you raise your right hand, please, sir? Do you swear on the testimony you're about to give that you will tell the whole truth, so help me now? Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, would you please state your name and spell it? Mohamed, M-O-H-A-M-E-D, Marhomi, M-A-R-H-O-U-M-Y. And you're here today because the plaintiff, James Damiano, has identified you as someone who has relevant information about the claims he has made in this case and the federal rules of litigation under which we're all operating here uh, give each party the right to hear what the witnesses for the other side have to say under oath and the proceeding here even though it's in a lawyer's office has the same seriousness and solemnity as if the proceedings were taking place in the United States court in front of the judge and jury in the United States courthouse all of your testimony here uh, is under oath, which, as you know, means you have to tell the truth here. Um, do you understand that? Mm-hmm. 
Now, as I said, I represent, along with my partner, Mr. Hayes, uh, the defendants in this case, Sony Music Entertainment and Bob Dylan, and I'm going to ask you a series of questions. The questions are going to be taken down by the court reporter and we're being videotaped as we sit here. Your answers then will be taken down by the court reporter word for word and it's important that you answer each question verbally, that is yes, no, or... I, I did, however, concur with him when he asked me, do you think I should bring my songs with me? I said, sure, why not? What could it hurt? For you today, a melodic analysis and comparison of the main melody of Steel Guitars by James Damiano to the main melody of Dignity by Bob Dylan. I define melody as the sequence or ordering of pitches in a single line of a musical composition. Uh, that is, uh, melody is the ordering of pitches, which are often referred to as numbers, one being the, the number of the pitch center or tonic of the composition. Uh, and melody is, is distinct from rhythm, which specifies the timing and the duration of those notes. Um, Analysis uh, will cover the main melody of steel guitars and the main melody of dignity, which I find to be strikingly similar. Uh, to begin, I'd like to uh, illustrate the similarity of these two melodies by playing for you what I identify uh, to be the common features themselves, a melodic arc of shared melodic features between uh, these two compositions. This melodic arc is the pitches one, followed by the pitches 5, 6, 1, and then uh, after a gap, proceeding to the pitches 2, 3, 1. Uh, these pitches constitute what I call a melodic arc in that they have, uh, they bear with them something of the character of the melodic phrase, starting with one, ending with one, proceeding uh, in certain patterns uh, in between, particularly the five, six, one progression uh, uh, in between, and the, the ending with the two, three, one. There's a kind of a melodic character to this, uh, this arc, more than just a set of shared pitches. Um, what I will be doing shortly is I'll be leading you through an analysis allowing you to hear how Steel Guitars actually projects this exact same arc as Dignity. Many times, but on those occasions when he would ask me, could I pass on something to Mr. Dillon? I may have said to him, I'll try and pass it along, a four words to that effect. Do you recall saying the following to Mr. Damiano, sir? Is there a page reference that you're reading? I have a one slash two on it. Is there a debate? Oh, a number? date's number 144. Okay, let me just put that in front of the witness. Mm -hmm. Sure. sure. of the page, or at least it appears to, that you state, my job here is to pass along information to Bob. Do you recall saying that, sir? Looking yes. At the top. Okay. And Bob, of course, is Bob Dylan? Yes. And then you say, which I think I have. Do you see that, sir? Yes. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. When you said that to Mr. Damiano, which I think I have, lying to him? I was, I was, I was... 